hard looking. Days alone, your car won't start. It's hard to fix shit with the broken heart. I know growing up, it's not what it seems. And I do it again. <laughs> bop, bop, bop. Baby, don't you cry no more. I got two arms in an open door. Sure as there's a night in the day. Warning, little rant about human rights and politics ahead. If you're here to simply escape, skip to 2 minutes and 40 seconds. So the world is going through a tough time right now, facing a pandemic that the US has been handling very poorly from the beginning. Corruption laces every vein of the system we call democracy. We are also going through a civil rights movement, which is beautiful and needed because black people have been systemically oppressed for the entirety of this country's existence. But neutral people have been exposing themselves as very racist and personally having to decide between educating them or blocking blocking them has been very exhausting. If you find yourself to be against the Black Lives Matter movement, then guess what? You are a Nazi. And if I were you, I'd take a long, hard look at yourself. Cops have been shooting protesters, destroying medical camps, illegally arresting people, kidnapping women, beating and tear gassing peaceful protesters, and have successfully combated police brutality protests with police brutality. Meanwhile, ICE is gassing people by quote unquote cleaning the facility every day and over 3,000 kids have been lost, aka sex trafficked, which is essentially a concentration camp. Climate change is getting worse even more rapidly than climate change specialists could predict. The coldest place on the earth hit record breaking 100 degrees Fahrenheit not long ago, something that scientists thought would take another 30 years. So the window we had to take action against climate change is going to close sooner than we thought. Climate change and coronavirus are two terrible things that will hurt black and brown people at disproportionate rates in the US, but our government is so evil and so corrupt that making any change feels completely impossible. The fact that the electoral college and voter suppression stops people's true voices from being heard and that people purely lack any control in our government is really fucking me up. We are in desperate need for the UN to intervene with our elections. On top of all the evil that we are exposed to almost every single day, personally I've been struggling to keep up with work, I'm falling behind on commissions, lacking any desire to draw, and I've been behind on videos. I feel very overwhelmed and I truly Really just feel like shutting down so yeah i uh i think i have creative block so the brainstorm was a failure so i had to resort to desperate measures what kind of video do you think i should make uh struggling with art thanks for the suggestion boom so then I had a mini meltdown about how my best videos are the ones where I buy a lot of art supplies and show you what I got and use them, so I ordered a bunch of stuff that I had been planning to buy anyway, only for the art supply store to tell me, Hi, so sorry, we don't have any of the paper rolls you want, and the credit card system is down, so you're just gonna have to come in. For me to respond. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense, I'll see you soon. So although I was sad that I wasn't going to get my paper rolls that my entire video was based around, I did get this gesso and this white acrylic paint, and changing of the guard because my old acrylic paint is dead. The main reason I wanted the paper rolls because I wanted to practice on something big without ruining the big canvases I had. Also, I realize I'll never be able to be a minimalist queen, so here's a little tour. Here are some cables that I'm too lazy to manage. Some art supplies that I'm scared if I put them away, I'll forget they will exist and never use them. Also, a can I'm trying to figure out how to reuse. Here's a pile of thrifted fabric that I use for pictures and videos that just sit there. And then I'm gonna set out my, my blow dryer because I'm an impatient queen. Here are my weapons of choice. There are a bunch of free brushes that I got, a really cheap Ikea brush, and then a brush I got for free by waiting outside a Blick on Black Friday. All was good and well, until... What the fuck is that? Oh. The gesso I got was bad, heartbreaking. I've never used gesso before, so I thought that maybe this was normal. I mixed it with some water. It was so clumpy and never mixed correctly. I messaged all my artsy friends because I thought it was crazy. So I went in and got a new one and this is what it's supposed to be like. And I knew it was good because it already got all over me. <laughs> I've never really properly primed a canvas before, but I wanted to make sure I did it for this one, specifically because these canvases are super, super old and have just been sitting in someone's garage for years on end, so I thought it would be important to do this. I also wanted to see what it would do since I've never used it before and never understood why it was important. Honestly, I didn't see that much of a difference. Maybe I didn't do enough layers, but 
I'll keep experimenting with it. So today I think I want to talk about the two interviews that I had with two different older men in like the art field. The first one was working for an art print business. He essentially just wanted to interview me to see if having an employee interested him at all. So the chances of me even getting the job were slim to none. He specifically was interested in my resume because I was a co-owner of a wedding videography business. In case he'd ever want me to take over the business operations, he said he wanted a self-starter. The interview ended up lasting for three hours and almost didn't even feel like an interview to be honest. Just felt like I was chatting with a friend who had much more life experience than me. He was about in his 70s and we kind of talked about everything to be honest. But the most interesting part of the conversation was how we talked about our differing situations at the age of 20. When he was in his 20s, he was able to pay off his wedding, his house, his car, and his college education just by working 30 hours a week at a grocery store for minimum wage. Can you believe that? At the time, I was working at a movie theater for minimum wage and I could barely afford my apartment, had $30,000 of student loan debt, had no health insurance, and swore off any type of marriage because it seems like a waste of money and absolutely means nothing to me. And we can get into the details of that later because that's a completely different story. He couldn't believe what I had just told him and then he said the most beautiful thing to me. I hate Trump. We started ranting about him together and how much we hated the way things are nowadays. Now I don't want to reiterate our entire conversation, but he essentially was a 70 year old ally and that was awesome to see. It gave me hope knowing that he has kids and grandkids who are making the world a little better. Anyways, that's just a long-winded story just to say that the economic structures we have in America are severely flawed and these systems are actively killing people. Trickle-down economics is lobbied by rich people to create a bigger gap between the middle class and the rich. Our government is not controlled by the people, it's controlled by the wealthy. It's not even a democracy, it's an oligarchy. This is America. Let's take a moment to lower our blood pressure by petting our cat and watching him be cute. Ah oh, yes, very cute. Love of my life. All right, now that we've gotten this far in the painting, it is important to take a step back and look at it. That's my biggest flaw. My art teacher used to tell me this all the time. If you've been working on a painting close up for a while, make sure you step back and see it as a whole, just to know that you have made progress. And as I'm saying this, I realize that you should do this with your life as well. You might not be feeling like you've done much right now in this moment, but maybe if you step back and look at your life as a whole, you would recognize all of your accomplishments. On to interview number two. Interview two was a completely different vibe. It was an art studio in a very rich location. The posting said I'd get paid a little more than minimum wage, which was fine by me because I was more than happy to not work at a movie theater anymore and be working for an industry I was actually interested in. The interview was going very well. There were a lot of weird moments where I would explain my work ethic and he'd make backhanded comments about people my age being lazy, not wanting to work for anything. <clears throat> yeah, um, excuse me, sir? <laughs> Anyways, he really liked me because I wasn't like most people my age and offered me the job on the spot. Ooh, yay, right? So exciting. I'm gonna work in an art gallery. Alright then, now let's get into how much I'll get paid. So here's this pitch. I'd work at the gallery, I'd clean it, I'd take care of it, help sell the art in it, and get paid nothing. I could potentially make money by teaching art classes. If I choose to do that, then I'd have to organize it and personally bring in the clientele. Or I could make art for the gallery and sell it, but I'd only make 10% commission. That being said, I'll have to make what he tells me to make because the anime style I had would not sell. Now he's giving me a deal, right? But wait, there's more. Not only would I get to work for absolutely nothing with barely any potential of making money in the first place, I'd also get millions of dollars worth of art education. Because he has many post-grad Columbus College of Arts students working there. This is how I sounded on the outside. Oh my god! Wow! Anyways, this is concluding day one of this painting. Look how satisfying it is to wash this brush. 
So after this man told me that I was going to get millions of dollars worth of education from all of my peers, on the inside I was thinking that this man is a scam artist. These kids are working for you for free after spending millions of dollars to go to art school. Not only do I not give a single fuck about art school, isn't that kind of evil to exploit people like that? Especially people who are very in debt. Apparently it's a common thing, I guess, because he said he did this when he was my age, but Damn, dude. When you were my age, the cost of living was like two pennies. The world doesn't work like that anymore. Sure, I'd love to work here for free if I were like, I don't know, 13, had rich parents who could afford to live in this area and a lot of spare time on my hands. I'm a grown adult with rent, sir. You can't be serious. Anyways, I politely told him that I couldn't accept his offer and then got a significantly better job later on. <laughs> Those are the two most significant job interviews I probably have, mainly because they took the longest. Those both were like an hour long. So since the video isn't over, I figure I'll just like go over some other interviews I've had. <laughs> I interviewed for a bunch of MLM schemes. Now if you don't know what an MLM is, it's a multi-level marketing scheme and basically they just recruit a bunch of young naive people who don't know anything about anything and think this is a great opportunity to make a lot of money when it really isn't. Yeah. You'll typically be able to see if it's an MLM by looking at the job description. They want an entry level marketer, marketing, entry level, entry level, blah, blah, blah. It's, it'll be clear because there'll be a lot of them. So I went to a lot of interviews for these MLMs and honestly, if you are nervous about interviewing and you want to practice, I would recommend applying for MLM schemes because it's like guaranteed they're going to call you in for an interview and um, the people are very intimidating. Uh, so honestly, it's great practice. I ended up feeling like an interview god at the end of it. At one of the interviews, the eye contact was so intense and the guy never broke eye contact with me once. It was honestly terrifying and I was too scared to look away because I felt like we were trying to assert dominance over each other. So we just ended up staring at each other and I literally wasn't paying attention to what he was saying at all because I was paying attention to keeping eye contact with this man and it was horrifying and my face started twitching. <laughs> And then one time I was interviewed by this guy who was like so short, like probably some, like five foot or under. As soon as we walk into his office, his desk is like so high, his chair is so high, and then my chair, the interviewer's chair, so low. So looking up at him was like a two foot diagonal. It was very clear he was trying to set some kind of power dynamic and I was not having it. Honestly, I didn't even try in that interview. So yeah, interviews are weird. Don't recommend. So yeah, here's the finished painting. I didn't end up loving it when I finished it, but my boyfriend really likes it and it really gave me an ego boost. So you know what? It's not that bad. <laughs> Sometimes you need outside people to tell you when you've done a good job. For me, that's all the time. I need outside people to tell me I did a good job all the time. <laughs> also, I know all you art sluts out there love dirty hands and dirty rags and shit like that because I do too. We are all the same. We are all living the same lives. So here's my dirty hands. <laughs> Graduation. Can I be in this one too, Mom? Yeah. 
at least I am going through things and trying to do stuff. You know, there might be, there's some days that I just don't feel like doing anything, but I think that that's part of the course, you know. Yeah, that's normal. I love you. I love you too.